In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with all of you, with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord. When the Pharisees heard that Jesus had silenced the Sadducees, they gathered together, and one of them, a scholar of the law, tested him by asking, Teacher, which commandment in the law is the greatest? He said to him, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. This is the greatest and the first commandment. The second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. The whole law and the prophets depend on these two commandments. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. Jesus is teaching the Pharisees, and don't forget, the Pharisees can be likened to us Catholics who have been given that great gift of the sacramental life of the church, but who still hold back from loving God with all that we have, loving our neighbor as herself. Jesus is teaching the Pharisees, he's teaching you and I, that we are to love God not with some sober restraint or reserve, but Jesus is teaching us that we are to love God exuberantly, energetically, vigorously, I would say zealously. If I've ever called you a zealot, it's only to spur you on to even more so love the Lord your God. I'm encouraging you to love God with more of your heart, with more of your soul, with more, more of your mind, and it goes without saying, with more of your body, with all your strength. Remember that enigmatic parable of the faithful and prudent servant that the master put in charge of his household. If the steward begins to celebrate the good things his master has left him, if he drinks all the wine and gets drunk, if he eats all the food and makes the lesser manservants and maidservants serve him, this steward is beaten severely and assigned the lowest place when his master does return. But the servant who anticipates his master coming home and allows his master to celebrate when he does return by giving the steward the highest spot at the banquet table, the master gives the faithful and prudent steward all of his wealth. This is what Jesus is telling us, that merit is the reward of grace. You see, we wrongly think that grace is the reward of merit. And we think this way because Satan has poisoned our minds. We think that if we do good, God will give us grace. We think that if we live out our vocations faithfully, that God will give us grace and we will become holy. No, that's not the way it works. Grace cannot be earned. Grace is a gift freely given by God. God loves us, and even when we're undeserving of his love, he gives us grace. Grace is given to sinners, not the righteous. And that's why we go to confession. We tell God that we are sinners, that we don't deserve his love, his grace, and God can't help but fall in love with us, with our humility and our gratitude for what we have been given that makes us even more desirous of his love. And so God does love us more, gives us his grace. Let me put this in an angelic context so that you can see it more clearly. It is said by St. Thomas Aquinas that the good angels, by virtue of the grace given to them that they received at their creation, that they were content in all humility and gratitude to wait for the full light of the glory of God to shine upon them. In other words, the angels at their creation, they couldn't see God directly. They had to wait to see God as God sees himself. But there were certain of the angels, Satan and the evil angels, who could not wait for the full light to shine upon them. They were impatient. And so the devil presumed to raise himself toward God and his, and his light. Satan presumed that by his own power that he would grasp 
the fullness of light. The evil one could not wait for God to give him more grace so that in God's time, he would enter into the fullness of that light. And so Satan moved to shine the fullness of light upon himself, and thus he sinned and fell from grace. St. Thomas Aquinas says that God desires to share his goodness by conferring his likeness on the things that he has made, especially the man, the one he has made in the image and likeness of his son. In other words, God has put a little bit of his goodness into every human person that you see. And this has the effect that we Catholics, when we receive a sacrament, God gives us grace through the Eucharist that we eat. We receive grace and are able to see the likeness of God that has been put in our fellow man. And that's what causes us to fall in love with our neighbor, to love neighbor as self. Our neighbor, in resembling God, makes us fall in love with him. And so it is then, the more we desire to love God, the more grace we are given, and the more we fall in love with the person that lives next door to us. It is our desire to love God, to wait for our master's return humbly and patiently, and thereby express our gratitude when the master does come home, because it is then that we will be the recipients of a great banquet feast that the master throws in our honor. I just give you one more example in Dante, in his Divine Comedy, he writes the whole poem to give the accolades to a beautiful woman, his heartthrob, Beatrice. Beatrice is so lovely to Dante that he's using his poetry to describe her beauty. But when Dante, who wrote the Divine Comedy, a book about that thick, all to show the beauty of this woman, when Dante enters into paradise, and Jesus Christ shines his radiant light, his divine light upon Beatrice, suddenly this woman becomes so beautiful that Dante gives up trying to describe her beauty. It's beyond the words of his poetry to describe the beauty of a person illuminated by God's grace. And I've told you married people this a thousand times. You're going to be shocked when you enter heaven and you see that God looks like your spouse's face. Don't we even pray in our Eucharistic revival prayer before every Mass? Jesus, as I encounter you in the sacrament of your body and your blood, may I be led to a greater charity and concern for my fellow brothers and sisters in the human family, recognizing your face in each one of them. Jesus is telling the Pharisees Jesus is telling us lukewarm Catholics that we don't love God passionately enough. If we don't come to Mass every Sunday, we're not loving God with all our heart. If we don't clamor and beg and plead for the Eucharist like a child begging his parents for ice cream on a summer day, then we don't love God with all our soul. Jesus is telling us that if we don't recognize his face in our neighbor, that we don't love God with all our heart. Because God has filled our hearts, our soul, our mind with his grace. And then we love our neighbor as self because we see God's face reflected in our neighbor. May God bless you.